Hey guys, today I'm gonna to be reviewing my saw stop job site pro 10 inch table saw. It's a mouthful. <laughs> and basically I'm gonna be asking, is this table saw worth $1,400? How much do you pay for that thing? Roll the... Oh, oh, how close, how close will I get? Uh, relax, it's just YouTube magic. Nothing to worry about, folks. Let me explain to you real quick what SawStop does. All SawStop table saws have a built-in aluminum brake, and if anything touches the blade that can conduct a current, like your hand, the saw senses that and shoots that aluminum brake up into the blade and it drops down out of the way before it can hurt your hand, generally even before it can put a nick in your finger. No other saw manufacturer does that. This is what one of the brakes looks like that goes inside the saw stop. Now this one is actually for a dado blade, which brings me to another point that this saw will also hold an eight inch dado blade and fully function with the brake. The Jobsat Pro comes with a 10 inch 40 tooth combination blade and it is absolutely useless because this saw only has one and a half horsepower. If it had three horsepower, a combination blade would be most excellent. But on this, it's useless and you need to go ahead and get rid of it. What you're gonna need is a 24 tooth crosscut blade for lumber because it's gonna work perfectly. It's gonna power through everything and not bog the saw down. And if you wanna deal with something like plywood where you're gonna be cross cutting instead of ripping, in that case, you're gonna want this 60 tooth ripping blade for stuff like plywood and everything because it's going to give you a nice smooth cut. I've literally tripped the breaker every single time I've tried using the combination blade. Let's talk about fences because fences on job site saws are notoriously horrible. Now for someone like myself coming from a cabinet shop background and using something like a Biesmeyer fence on a full cabinet saw and then you go to a job site saw and you use a horrible fence, it's terrible. The fence on this job site pro is pretty freaking amazing. I gotta say, I do love it. The, the lockdown system is really efficient and it locks down firmly. And the back, there's very little movement at the back. In its standard setup, it'll cut down to 13 and a half inches wide, but then you just flip this little lever on the bottom and you can expand that out. And then there's a different set of numbers that you use and then you can cut up to 25 and a half inches wide. Once you do expand it, it leaves this area right here that's open and it actually has this storage box that holds uh, an extra brake and your T-square and your safety cover, which, you know, I'll never use that. Sorry, folks. <laughs> Sorry. Whenever you've got something like a piece of plywood that's shooting across here, there's nothing to support that. Wrong. You actually just flip this little knob on top of the fence and when you do that, it gives you this little flat area to rest against. One of the other really cool features about this fence is that this extra little piece on the side actually detaches and you can attach it to the blade side so that when you're cutting something narrow, you don't have to get the full blade, uh, the, excuse me, the full fence right up close to the blade and it gives you a little bit of extra room to put your fingers beside the blade. <laughs> I'm just kidding, I know that freaks you people out. Actually, Actually, I probably would put my fingers there, but you know, for your push stick and everything, it just gives you some extra room. Oh, I missed him. How about blade height adjustment? One full rotation takes the blade all the way up and all the way down, super fast. To adjust the bevel of the blade, all you do is squeeze and turn. Super easy, super fast again. The saw has a two-stage power button all you do is flip the switch to on and it'll blink red and green depending on how long it's been on. I've had this saw in use, so it did it really quickly. Once it stays green, then you just pull the paddle switch and that turns the full power on. One thing you do have to keep in mind when you're using a saw stop that is not an issue on other saws is when you're doing things like in the video where I built the birdcage with my daughter Riley, I passed some aluminum uh, sheeting through here and as soon as it hit the blade, it locked the brake up because it passed the current through it. So in order to avoid things like that, and even if you're running stuff like maybe some wet wood, some pressure treated lumber, all you have to do is bypass the safety system. And to do that, you push down this key at the top, and then once you get a red light there, flashes, you pull the paddle up. And once you get another red flash, then you can let go. 
Another one of the things that I love about this saw is that just because that has the saw stop feature, the safety feature, you know, they could charge for that and just kind of put out a mediocre saw. And for most people, it'd be worth it just to have that safety feature. But they put a lot of thought into things like the fence and also the cart that it rolls on. Super easy, super sturdy. For somebody like me who, has, who works in like my garage, my garage is my shop, and it gets tighter and smaller every day as we put my girl's four wheelers and bikes. And as I get extra wood and lumber and it piles up, I just run out of space. So I'm constantly moving stuff around. So having something like this is perfect for me. All you do is step on the lever then, pull it up, let it lock, let it lock, <laughs> and then roll it out of the way. Even though you don't see me use it very often, they do provide you with a, uh, a plastic push stick that actually works pretty well and has its own handy dandy storage area right here on the side of the saw. The saw stop table saw does of course come with a riving knife and it's very easy to remove. All you do is pull this lever, flick that lever up and like I said, it's very easy to remove. <laughs> it's a little trick to it. There we go. It just has these two little notches, these two holes that line up the two pegs on here. So once you get that part figured out, then put it back in, no effort at all. As far as dust collection goes on this saw, although I don't use it very often, it actually does have pretty good dust collection. It has these two little shrouds. They're just on this flexible piece of plastic hinge at the back. And they have a magnet on the front of them that catches to hold it in place and these move away from when you wanna pull the blade out or the brake. Now, of course, anybody can shove a hot dog into a saw blade, but here on the Hacksman, well, I have meticulously handcrafted the meat hand, which I will be shoving into the saw blade. I almost forgot. Pinkies up, gotta keep it fancy. Let's break something, but first, safety. Nah, nah, I don't, I don't need them. <laughs> I've got multiple cameras set up, so they're in the shot. I've got the fan shroud pulled back underneath in the cabinet of the saw, and the meat hand is being consumed by flies. Everything is rolling. I got one shot at this. Let's see what happens. Holy smoke. Wow. Wow. That is fast. Slow-mo. All right, let's see what the finger looks like, the hot dog finger. Uh, yeah, nothing. There is not even, there is not the slightest cut on there. That is crazy. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Okay, so upon editing this video, I realized that I had in fact picked up the wrong hot dog finger from the meat hand, okay? Because when the saw dropped, when the blade dropped, it shook and it moved the fingers over, okay? And so I looked at the wrong finger. But good news, I do actually have footage, a close up of the actual finger, the hot dog finger, that was struck by the saw blade. And if you look very closely, you can see where there's a slight little dent where the blade hit, but still no skin was broken on that hot dog. After activating the brake, the first thing you have to do is drop the arbor block all the way down. So I just drop that and then you can kind of see it. Can you see that on video right there? Right there, watch it. There we go. And once that clicks, then you can just raise it back up. All right, and that's what you get. And it just jams in there and it's made 
to absorb the impact. It's like a crumple zone right there. Did I say crumple zone? It's a crumple zone right there. And hopefully we'll be able to see in the video where there's basically a little explosion that goes on in here. To get yourself back up and running, all you gotta do is uh, whip out your credit card, spend $79 plus shipping, order yourself a new brake cartridge, install the new brake cartridge, which is very easy. Put the blade on. And now, the good is new. Oh, 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 I got it. I got it. I got it. That fly is dead. That fly will haunt me no more.